So the first poem is called Living Her Life on Broken Wings. Caught in the macrame web she spun by internal decadence leaves her to live her life on broken wings. The totality of carcasses strewn at her feet comes from sagacious deceptions, filling reels of pictorial film, awaiting its panoramic debut. Dilapidated wrought iron gates slump and neglect as empty rope swings from the gallows. Trees bend to the way of sorrowful winds convoluting in permanency. Effluvium impregnates the air. Excrement released from the bowels of ghouls and jackals leaves her in a high virginitous state, like the ash residue she snorts from crematoriums. Encompassed and guised in monk's cloth is the semblance motif she's ensconced in, retreating into self-imposed exile, crawling for pity, living her life on broken wings, forlorn by choice parochialism, hoping to conceal the rancor imploding vehemently inside her belly. Incrustations of coil scales coats her tongue, regurgitated acidic lace breath restricts speech, adhering from crescents. Lines of demarcations leads to extricating atonement from all that knew and loved her. But as Christ approached her fortress, her induced aversion toward his merciful beauty inflamed anger and purulent matter, stirring scabies beneath, perforating her flesh, descending from her monstrous sight, he leaves her to the underworld. As she smells her lover nearing, she becomes physically inanimate. Gargantuan in stature, her lover stands before her, showing her lack of vaciousness. Passions arise and he gives her the gift she seeks. Dislodged from this life like the arrows released from the bows of an archer's hands. Ballerina swan dance in singed tutus. Expedient, asphyxiated voyage into perdition. This her resolve as she lived her life on broken wings. Whoa. The second poem is called Awaken Nightmares. Cathedral crucifixes sit soundly apex as protruding hurled ivory cherubs nestle sweetly among indigo skies. Bells resound throughout the halls and pillars, awaken spirits who moan from anarchy's fierce resolve. An odyssey of fibrotic misfits congealed together by ailing intelligence, applaud ferociously at the neuroses of misconduct, diluted realities, deteriorating inhibitions, abstract thinking, murderers and deviants, intentionally incognizant turning blind eye to monsters and ne'er-do-wells who thrive on selfishness and the inconsistencies of compassion, charging forward in a retrogative motion seeking aberration, ruins upon ruin, decaying nations, depleted spirits, man that knighted himself God, who run on the edges of letters, delving toward fire and brimstone, speaking evil of relish desires, fraudulence and duplicities, those who fight for Satan's scarlet cunts and wenches beneath elliptic skies to frolic with relics, hollow screams from empty tombs, echoes, finding death in its lustful embrace, kissing and salivating parchment worms, man-made purgatory's methodical torment is our punishment for disobedience, hell on earth. In the hush of sunset, beneath shallow placid waters, we've buried our living next to the dead, adorning their breasts with beds of carnations, muting and concealing truths and legacies. Amity should avail between planets and nations, sinners and prophets, man and humanity, but cowardly. Cowardly we hide between the notes of Mozart's sonatas, hoping not to be seen for what we are on paper. You want to try
learned something new. Something called Wednesday. Um, it's written in a circus theme, so let me see how hopefully I remember everything. <laughs> Let's see. Welcome to the show. Look inside the magician's hat and let the glass make a crystallize your view. Wednesday is compromise integrity for pixie dust from fairy tales. Imagery colored illustrations captioned with comic book punchlines. A modious upper of mastery puppeteers and defective fantachinis. We will amuse you with mimicry of self-dehumanizing portraits. Music box drama for jack-in-the-box customers. <laughs> Pinocchio's obsequious bitch has been lifted from her dusty shelf to charm those of splintered lives and sold to the highest bidder for nothing. Choreographed manipulation on crooked painted faces in technicolor like crazed alabaster ballerinas repetitiously pivoting on golden spindles and pink boxes ring the bell and enter the house of mirrors reflective deformity. Yank her string for empty promises. Be the opportunist of self-satisfaction. Wednesday's augmentation consists in genuflecting before dwarf glow sticks to a spit shine maximization, inveigling you to back alleyway delectations. Snap the whip and hear the lions roar, dominatrix theatrics that pleases her like a jester's buffoonery spinning wheel. Where will Wednesday go? What will Wednesday do? This pyramid of talent that weeps on dampened fire escapes after walking through her day's kaleidoscope of obscurity. I will tell you what will happen. She will stumble into taverns where warm beer serve for bitter tongues. The lights will dim after her ride on molten charging horses as the carousel slows down. Bold fingers that try to revive the inanimateness within will find their rightful places and the carnival will come to a halt. Wednesday will then step back behind the satin curtain where the magician will magically make her disappear until the following Wednesday. The meridian of thought beats on her like Jack Hammers to concrete. She's the puppet to puppeteers, blades cut to the contours of her body, leading suckling gnomes to sawdust drunkenness. Bitch has been carved at the bottom of her feet where she will then reside back on her dusty shelf until the music starts again. Oh, this is a grandiose appeal of carnival madness and ludicrous attraction. Oh, but the show, the show must go on. Whoa. This last poem is called, They Said. <clears throat> Smoky rooms of chill frosted glasses, filled with moonshine and flagging tongues, spun fallacious unknowns. These fly licking prima donnas and pips that served compost filled puff pastries and stumbled to the loo. Drunk oracles and false prophets spoke our anthologies and eulogies of lives not yet lived, but buried, throwing us on the thorns of cactuses, impaling any dreams we dreamt, profane disclosures, parasites twisted mouths that questioned the legitimacy of offspring we bore, taking our individuality and assimilating it to their skeletal perversions and misguided youthful decisions. Oh, they spoke with tongues of warlocks, cultivating spells with witches' saliva, cadaverous cowards that broke bread at our tables and slashed our throats, approximating on ulterior deaths, outward adulation covered by fraudulent smiles, treacherous facades by Christians, journalists without sources, speculative facts, convictions without trials. They said, our robust frame resembled porky pigs, our intellect adequate to bottom feeders, our beauty, the resemblance to Medusa's. They only saw the Mary Magdalene of our sins. Evaporated we rose but do, 
Rainstorms fell, clearing gold-covered pathways, and radiant sunshine beat upon our skin, and we realized that there were still rainbows to climb. And as they said, what they said, the way they said, oh, they forgot to mention that we are the children of God. Whoa.